Good afternoon. It is a big pleasure to stay to be here. So thanks so much, Miss, for that kind invitation. Special thanks to Eric Van Duren to introduce us for the V concept. I will show something that we are, have been working with the Brazilian team, Gustavo Giordani and Paulo Fernando and me. So uh, my talk today will be prosthetic options for posterior and anterior restorations, the procedure aspect. Uh, I would like always to talk about three questions in each topic that I will talk today. And always we will mention when, what, why, and how we can use some procedures. So I would like to introduce uh, three concepts in the restorative part. We will talk about the retainer type, about the abutment type, and about the abutment material. We know that we have uh, two choices in each one, in which topic. We have the screw restorations versus the cements. You can be screwer or cementer. We have the stock abutment versus custom abutment. We have to choose if we use one other one. And also we have metal versus ceramic. But we know before we have to choose which one will be the kind or the type of the restoration that you use, we have to perform uh, acceptable tissues surround about your implant restorations. And to provide this kind of tissue, we have to manage the tissue in the proper way. And to manage the tissue, in the correct way, we have uh, to take care about our provisional restorations. And to take care about that provisional restorations, we have to start sometimes customizing our type of restorations since the provisional phase. So now let's understand when, why, and how we have to customize it since the provisional phase. So pay attention now in four situations, four tooth that we struck it. And if you see, each one has a specific shape, as Professor Marinello mentioned for us before. So if we think that we have to uh, deliver for the, pa the patient a natural restoration, we have to follow this kind of shape. And if we work with prefabricated abutments, it will be difficult to deliver acceptable restorations. And a lot of articles mention that if we work in the provisional phase with prefabricated abutments to deliver a natural restoration, we have to spend a lot of appointments managing the tissue. And this can traumatize our soft tissue. So let's try to show some protocols that we can improve our tissue after the implant placement. And also, if we work with the final restoration, if we want to work with uh, customizing abutments or a natural crown, we have to work with customizing abutments here. Because if we place a prefabricated, we have problems with cementation, we have problems to work with the crown. A lot of articles mention that we can increase pet implantitis if we work with a prefabricated abutments because it's difficult to remove the excess. And some articles also mention that we have more problems with the bone when we use prefabricated abutments. So we know that we have a lot of advantage to work with custom abutments. And if you want to have more accuracy to work with custom abutments, we start to do some experience. So if you go for your cast before you start your surgery and you remove your tooth on top of the cast, you start to find different root shapes. It's the same that I show you in the other slide. So if you want to create a protocol, you can improve your time working in the cast. And nowadays, you can work with Daikon in Conbin and also with some data for the uh, scan your cast. If you work in this way, you have more accuracy in your restorations. And also, the risk assessment will be low because you work before. So uh, the protocol that will show how you can manage the tissue with provisional restorations were in based in some articles that they launched in maybe more 20 years ago. And also, we have some data for CAD-CAN designs and some uh, tissue managed for 
uh, Sue in one Spanish that call Oscar Gonzalez. And I'm happy that's the technique that we have been working in this year. I try to find some new articles about tissue management, and Fullhauser showed the cop root technique can have a good outcomes after five years. Also, Stefan Shu. So I think we are in good path. We are find some good ways. And if you cannot do the imminent loading, you can customize in your healing abutments. And this is the way that we have been working. So a plantation in this simple case, case that we do day by in your daily practice. So the patient lose the molar and the premolar. We work with Paulo Fernando from Implant Plario Brazil. So Paulo placed two V3 implants. And you can see that we have the implant now in the alveolus. If we go to the normal approach, you place some healing abutments, OK? And you know that after four months, you have this kind of tissue. And when we have this kind of tissue, we have to work a lot, maybe three, four appointments, to deliver a good restoration with a good contour. But we can accelerate this process. How we can do this? We can have our provisional abutment. We can create a layer on top of this abutment. And we place the provisional abutment with a flowable composite on top of the implant. And after this, we have to create a layer copying the alveolus with flowable composite. But we know that we can now be in a danger zone. So try always do this procedure to protect the alveolus with a sponge such as maybe a collagen sponge. We will protect the alveolus with collagen sponge, and after we will place the flowable simultaneously with curing. So we will place the flowable simultaneously with curing on top of the alveolus. After this, we will go with one marker, and we will draw the alveolus here, and also create a point in the buccal part, because it's easy when we remove and to place again. After this, we will work with burr rubbers, and we will, uh, uh, we will perform these custom abutments. OK? This is the approach. It's a simple approach. Instead, you use the normal and the usual approach. We start to use the customizing approach, and you can achieve a good outcome, a acceptable outcome, four months after uh, the implant placement. So you have two choices. Today, today in all days, to work with uh, the missed components, you can follow this way or the customizing way. Uh, I know that to work with provisionals, we have a lot of doubts. We have a lot of questions. So with Eric and other Brazilians, we, start, we want to go more further in this topic. So we start to do some experience. Our first experience, we tried to develop one alveolar model. So before we struck the tooth, we take one impression, OK? And after this, we will place the tooth inside the impression, like a copying tray abutment. After this, we will pour one cast, OK? And after we pour the cast, we have this kind of alveolar model that we have the same thing in the mouth. After this, we will place the implant, and we will create a jig with two wings. And this jig will be uh, to have more accuracy and to fit our copying tray abutment in the model that we create before. And after this, we will uh, stabilize the implant with some stone in the bottom and some flow in the top. We will have our crown, natural crown, and we will cut and place on top the provisional abutment. And now you can see we have figure number one and figure number two. If you compare, number two is the same tooth, but on top the provisional abutment. And now we have to understand when we can manage the tissue. If you see, line A is the changeable level. Line B is one millimeter of the changeable level. And we have to play just in the letter C. Because if we play the letter C, when you see in the sagittal view, we will create a concavity. That concavity has the function for provide a cloth or also a space for the soft tissue graft. And if you see in the frontal way, we will remove the sharp angles, the square angles here to provide a smooth area 
for our provisions. So the way that we have been working, even in posterior or anteriors, you can see we place the implant, maybe four millimeters from the gingival level. So the first millimeter will maintain the same shape. Two millimeters, uh, deep, we will create that concavity. And the one millimeter will be for the polished area for improve the V concept and also to improve the tissue surround the implant. Okay? In the sagittal view, we have this view. In the frontal view, we have to remove the square angles. Okay? And also, if you want to provide some, if you want to gain or if you want the tissue come a little bit coronally, you can remove a little bit in the area of the emergence profile. You can create the emergence profile a little bit straight so the gingiva can go coronally. So that way we can improve our tissue around the implant. And I know that this is a little bit like difficult for us, no? It's too much work. But this is an analogic protocol that we have been working. And now I think Eric can explain later because now we start to work with CADCAN and also we can mill in our, our abutment. And if you compare our abutment in the alveolar model, we have that it's almost ideal situation. So I think this will be the future. And we have published uh, these things in KDT and also in a Brazilian magazine that I can give for you later. But focus in that table now. If we work with stock abutment, we know that the cost is better, but the problem is to ma manage the margin. I can work with stock. But for me and for our group, more when someone referred the implant for us, the implant is the same level of the gingiva, so I don't need to manage the gingiva, so we work with stock abutments. But when I want to customize, when I have to have the ideal situation, I have to use the custom abutment because I can control the tissue, I can uh, better, have a better outcome. In, unfortunately, the time, we spend more time, and also the cost is a little bit high, okay? We use always when we have to manipulate the tissue, and we have to take care about the impression, the lab phase, and if it's possible, try to do the abutment with CAD CAN design. About uh, the custom, so why? Because we can improve our tissue support, the architecture, we can earn st statics. Oh, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous, but now I'm back again, and we can improve tissue support, tissue architecture. We can have better aesthetic outcomes. You can improve the final management for the crown for the technician work in the lab. When you use always and how, because manage the tissue during the, phase, uh, the provisional phase will be better for work with custom abutments. So our group prefer to use custom abutments for the final restorations. About the type of our restorations, we have a screw or cement. Which one will you use? If you go for that table that I have been working with my friend from Barcelona, Alvaro Blasi, we have pros, screw, like Marinello, Professor Marinello mentioned. Is we have retrievability, so it's easy to do the maintenance. But the problem sometimes is the holes, you no? Know? Because to close the hole, sometimes to assess the hole, we can have some problems. But if you work with CATCAN, uh, uh, like he mentioned, we can have more attributability and we can repair easily. Uh, the tip maybe to work with this, try to have a good uh, communication with your lab because sometimes the technicians work with a thin screwdriver. And the screwdriver that we have in our office sometimes is too thick. And if you place or do some wrong movement, you can provide some chip or some crack in our restorations. Try to talk with, this, with your technician. About the cement restorations, the good thing that we have less disconnections. We can work one about one on time. It's better. But the problem is the residual excess cement, that it's difficult and sometimes we can have some problems with this. We will use this when we have the hole a little bit facial or buccal, and we have to take care about the abutment design, the cement that we use, and also the protocol that we will cement. Okay? So why, what, and when, and how we can use this? Because we have more retrievability. We work, oh, again, sorry, nervous, about, uh, now, okay. Without cement, easier maintenance, 
always when we have the implant in correct position. And to work with these, we know that if we work with 3D softwares and surgical guides, we will achieve this outcome. Now let's talk about the abutment material a little bit. And about the abutment material, we can see that metal, the cost and the strength is an advantage. The problem is the color because we know that the patients now sometimes can complain. We work more in no static areas, okay? And we talk with the technician to have a correct polish. The ceramic, we have biocompatibility. We can have more cost. Sometimes you know that the ceramic is more friability. We have more problem with flexure. We have good statics, and we can work with CAD CAN. If you go further, we know that ceramic, we can work with two millimeters, more than two or less than two millimeters, because they have a good color. Metal, no. We have to work uh, always we have, when we have more than two millimeters. Otherwise, we have problems with color. Uh, the ceramic, we know that we have to have the ideal thickness to work with ceramic. Otherwise, we can have problems with fracture. With metal, we can work whatever thickness. And with patients that we have high function, may better work with metal. And with zirconia, we, have, we can increase the risk assessment. Okay? With options, we can work in our practice. As we, I mentioned, we prefer to use custom and screw. So MIS provides for us these options of components. We have the stock abutment. We have the gold or the chrome cobalt that we can cast. We have the tie base. 4 millimeters, we have the tie base 6 millimeters. We can play also with this area of the neck, with the polish area. We have the provisional cylinder, and we have also prefabricated zirconia abutments. And how we can take advantage of this? I know that some people maybe can ask, but how about the full zirconia abutments? Uh, Alvaro is a friend that worked with APROS with a lot of oral rehabilitation, and he mentioned with me that he had some problems in patients with high function that broke the zirconia abutments. And he mentioned also to me that it's so difficult to remove this. And sometimes if we not see that it starts to broke, the patient starts to have some wear in the implant area and can have some pigmentation in the tissue because zirconia with implant can damage the implant, okay? So we know that when we work with restorations, on top of the implants, we have a high risk assessment to have failed. So how we can improve this? We can place a metal link or a T-base between our zirconia restorations. And it, this was the approach that Alvaro used in that case, and he told me that now he has better outcome. So when we think in this kind of restorations, I would like to think, always when you do a restoration, failure will happen. And we have to design our restorations to avoid failure and to have more success. And we have to find where will be the weak link, and we have to do the restoration that can be retrievable in the easy way. So if we work with this kind of restorations, that we have the tie base, we will screw the tie base, and we will cement the monolithic full crown zirconia or disilicate on top of the tie base. And with cement zirconia or disilicate on top of the tie base, which will be the weak link, okay? Where is the weak link is located? And if we have some failure, how we can manage this failure. So with the normal options for posterior restorations, we have the cast, we can do metal restorations, we can place zirconia on top of the T-base, or we can use the prefabricated zirconia and place monolithic disilicate on top. And now you, you have to think, what is the weak link? Because if you work with metal, the weak link probably will be a chip on the layer ceramic part. And if you have a chip in a metal restoration, you have to replace. But if you work with 
tie base with zirconia or disilicate, lithium disilicate, if you have one problem, probably the problem will be the dead bone. It's difficult to fracture the disilicate or the zirconia restorations. So if you have a deep bone here, you have to bond again. You have to cement again. So your risk assessment will be low. And also will be retrievable. And to manage this failure is easier. If you have one problem with the crown, you can mill in again from the CAD CAN, and you have a new restoration in the easy way. So this is our options. And as I mentioned, the problem sometimes could be when you cement. So to achieve a good outcome when you cement the zirconia on top the tie base, we have the advantage in the MIS components that when we place the tie base on top of the analog, we have this kind of tie base. And also the tie base uh, has one concavity here that will guide us to cement the restorations. And you have to take care to clean a lot the tie base. You can also place to improve the macro and micro retention. You can place some monomer with 10 MDP, like uh, Monobone Plus or Alloy Primer from, from Kurarai. And you have to use also a cement with 10 MDP, like Multilink Hybrid Implant or Panavia V5. So if you work in this way, you can have a good uh, bonding. It's not bonding, we can have uh, good macro and micro retention between zirconia and the metal part. Ah, Victor, how about do a sun blaster on top the tie base. If you do sun blaster on top the tie base, we have the advantage that the tie base is go, uh, gold color. If we use sun blaster, maybe it will be grayish. So I try to take advantage with the color to avoid some grayish of my component. So I prefer just clean a lot, maybe with ultrasonic or steamer. And after this, use a protocol that I use 10 MDP and also cement with 10 MDP. Uh, so if we don't have a dehesion between the zirconia or the disilicate with the metal, we have to back to the basics. We have to think that our tie base with our zirconia crowns, we have to back to the base and think in three topics. The axial surface, our tie base have to be parallel, okay? We have to think about the length of the, our tie base with the anatomic crown, and also how we can improve the surface area. So we know that our tie base is parallel, so we, get, we have a good axial surface. We know that our tie base has some macro rotations, and you can improve the micro rotations with 10 MDP. But now, how about the length? We know that we have four and six millimeters of length. So when you are uh, planning a uh, restoration in the posterior area, try to think in this way. You will place the implant three or four millimeters from the gingiva, and you have your final anatomic crown. Try to do a math and understand how will be your total uh, length of your final crown. So we can suppose that we have like, premolars has the average with eight millimeters, okay? If we place the implant three millimeters, we have 11 millimeters. So you can use a tie base with six millimeters that you also, you can achieve your tie base close to the fossa, but also you can work with your tie base with four millimeters because four millimeters will be half than eight millimeters. So the math, I know that it's too fast, but try to take home these things. Tie base, at least half of size of your anatomic crown to improve your mechanical and micro retentions. Uh, so in a situation like that, which material I have to choose? Our group prefer to use tie base with lithium disilicate or zirconia in the monolithic way, just layer, okay? Let's see a clinical case now in the anterior area. We have this kind of patient that we have to extract the lateral, and we have to place some veneers on the anterior area. So we remove the lateral, we did our jig with wings, we provide our velar model, we made that provisional following the rules that we mentioned before, and using this way the plastic uh, cylinder provisional that MIS has. 
and we have this kind of tissue after four months. I our prefer to remove the provisional at least four months before surgery because I can manage the tissue better. Okay? So this is before extraction of our mother situation and after four months. And now I have to prep my veneers. Now to improve and to do a minimal preparations, we bleach it a little bit, uh, the tooth. We earn a little bit. We in improve the color. So now I have to prep less. Okay, we did uh, some additive works with uh, Cristiano Soares from Brazil. And now I have to decide if I have to place post or no. I can see that I have three millimeters of thickness. I have to prep 0 0.8, so I don't need to place post, and also I can place a veneer. We start to create our protocol to prep on top the mock-up, as Professor Galip Gurel mentioned 10 years ago. We create some grooves, we create a horizontal path of insertion, so we work with this kind of burrs to close uh, the black space that we have when we work between implants and teeth. Sometimes we have problems in this area, so we go a little bit further in the contact points. You can see that we have our preps here a little bit more conservative than here, that the tooth is a little bit dark. So we take the impression. After this, we work in the cat can and we perform it the way that we mentioned. You use the tie base with six millimeters, we made a custom zircon abutment on top of the tie base, and we bond with 10 MDP and also with a cement that has 10 MDP. For the restorations, we work with a monolithic disilicate, and we place it our restoration in the screw way, because we know the advantage that we can take with this situation. For the tooth, we stand in, we bond, and this is before and after. Uh, this is a lateral view of, about our tissue, before and after, and this is the picture that I like it because we can see in the right side, in the left side of you, the implant tissue, and now the natural root tissue. So if we follow some steps, if we work with the tissue in the correct way, we can achieve a acceptable outcome. So the question that we mentioned before, what is the V-concept? For me, it is a concept to perform better outcomes in our daily practice. When? You used to use when you want to optimize the tissue, volume, color, and steady outcomes. Why? Because we can improve the longevity of our restorations and how? Using the customized soft tissue approach. So I hope that I can explain a little bit the way that our team work. Thank you, MIS, for that kind invitation, and have a good Congress.